Let's talk about Sherlock. I like season one of Sherlock. I think it does a really nice job on reintroducing the characters in a more modern universe. Season two is even better, with James Moriarty being an excellent villain. Season three was good, but it has a lot more focus on family drama than actual cases. I really like it regardless. The Abominable Bride is absolutely beautiful. Even if you're not a Sherlock fan, I highly recommend you guys to watch it. And season four came in and... It was better than season 3, but it's not as good as the first two. I like that the show takes more risks and it really punches Sherlock at an emotional level, but I really hate that the show is getting more trippier and trippier as it get along. I know that drugs are a huge influence in the Sherlock stories, but they really overblown it in this season. That and the show has grown more and more into a superhero show, but I think that's kind of the point. I'm a fan of Sherlock, and I've jumped into the fandom as well, reading some crappy John Locke stories off of fanfiction.net, and I do embrace the ship in some ways. I do think that a possibility of Sherlock and John being gay is a rather hot thing to consider. However, and this is a big however, you, of all people, should know that John and Sherlock together will never be a thing, and should never be a thing, and you should still keep it inside your fandom. It has never been canon in the book, ever. I mean, people are actually making conspiracy theories about them being gay. Not kidding. Google the John Locke conspiracy. It, it makes the Pizza Gators sound less pathetic. I have quite a history of being inside these DeviantArt, Tumblr fandoms, embracing ships and arts off of popular characters, and I like them. Sure, there are cancerous artworks here and there, but the good ones are really good, and it sure as hell fills in a space that the canon has never ever bothered to fill. <clears throat> I enjoyed myself diving into fan a lot of times, getting into people's wild theories and speculations about the show, and of course, shipping is one of them. However, when in terms of shipping, I don't make a devout conspiracy theory of how one ship is better than the other. That's, that's insane. That's taking it way too much. I keep the shipping inside the fanon, and if the canon noticed the ship or make teases off of it, I would tear the hell up and glee and maybe come back to normal life. The point is, it's all fun and games. It's all just for fun. And we should just keep it all for fun. But that's not what happened in the mindset of these people. These people are so trenched in their shipping to the point where they consider it a part of their life. This all stems due to me never actually interacting with the people inside. I thought people draw this stuff for fun. And I thought these people are on the mindset that whatever fan arts they're drawing stays on fanon. But nope, some rabbit fans actually take things way too goddamn far. Fans furious after Sherlock's season ends with no gay kiss between Holmes and Watson. Good. Goddamn lord. Guys, get ready. This is one of the worst things that a cancerous fandom can offer to you. We're gonna get to even more terrifying stuff as we get along. A shipping community has formed around Sherlock in the bowels of Tumblr with the idea that Sherlock Holmes, Benedict Cumberbatch, and John Watson, Martin Freeman, must be gay for each other. This group, known as John Locke Shippers, scoured the show for homosexual subtext, and some even draw upon the text of Arthur Conan Doyle's original novels. They even have an acronym called TJLC, or the John Locke Conspiracy, which is the theory that the show was building up to a big reveal of the gay relationship. Heat Street collected some of these freaking pathetic meltdowns. Here's one of them that ugh, reeks of Tumblr. Listen, we were not wrong. Do not say we were wrong. It was so obvious. I do not know why they decided not to continue what they were doing. Maybe because DJLC discovered it all. Maybe because we knew about John Locke. They decided to change its story. But why? It's so obvious. We are not wrong. Might. Mate, you're way off of your meds, alright? This went on so far as to some people considering on filing complaints to the BBC. <laughs> I don't know how much use it will be, but they need to know that they're giving money to the people who are at this point purposefully shit on a certain portion of their audience in the cruelest fashion imaginable. So I feel like it's reasonable to let them know that what Moffat and Gatiss just did on Sherlock is not okay. It's not okay to not ship your character gay, even though canonically they're not gay, you goddamn lunatic. Oh my god. And by the way, 
Margatis, one of the key contributors of the show, and known as Mycroft Holmes, is actually gay in real life. So the writer of this entire show, one of the key contributors of this freaking show, is gay. He basically did an interview commenting on this entire gay fad. I am a gay man. This is not an issue. But we've explicitly said that this is not gonna happen. There is no game plan, no matter how much we lie about other things, that this show is going to culminate in Martin and Benedict going off into the sunset together. Yeah, exactly. You do that on your own fanfiction. Stop asking creators to notice you senpai. They are not going to do it. And if people want to write whatever they like and have a great time extrapolating, that's absolutely fine. But there's no hidden or exposed agenda. We're not trying to fuck with people's heads. Not trying to insult anybody or make any kind of issue out of it. There's nothing there. It's just our show, and that's what these characters are like. If people want to do that on their websites, absolutely fine. But there's nothing there. There. Marketees just said that you can write off of your fanfictions and imagine it on your head, but it's not gonna happen in canon and will never ever be so shut up! It's our show. There are characters. They do what we want them to do, and we don't have to represent absolutely everything in that 90 minutes. It's impossible. And it will kill it. It will be deadly to it. What they did was scale back that conversation and make it about something extremely silly, and that's not helping anyone. There. That's enough. Do you need any more words? That's a gay man contributing on Sherlock who said that this sort of demand of representation is absolute goddamn nonsense. He's absolutely on freaking point talking about this. But then, another horror came in. He confirmed on Twitter that the things that he said up there are completely real, and guess what? Some easily triggered snowflakes came to storm him. Now, the replies to Margaret T's on this entire thing are indeed mostly positive, but some of the negative ones are just infuriating. What you said in this interview saddened me immensely, because it sounds like our feelings on this means nothing to you. Yes! Yes, it doesn't deal with it, you entitled snowflake! You should really consider why so many fans feel so passionate about this topic. They have not made it up out of thin air. Yes, they did! Yes, they did, you- Oh my god, I can't believe this. Oh my god, this is getting so infuriating, Jesus Christ. Your freaking John Locke conspiracy theory is a freaking conspiracy theory. Ugh. I'm a lesbian and I get it, but when someone is creating, you don't get to dictate the terms to them. Nobody is dictating anything. Countless people simply analyzed what is already there and came into this conclusion. Your interpretation is not conclusive, you heretic! Same gender people can love on another intensely and not be sexual, but that society tries to pigeonhole them? What about the representation of LGBT plus characters, a slow burning romance between two men? Far too rare if you ask me. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I got nothing. I, I got nothing. This is the only thing I can give to these people. These people who ask for representation, they can go screw themselves. I'm sorry. I try my hardest to find any sort of good, reasonable, productive arguments for why representation matters. But the only thing that I hear from people demanding representation is, Senpai, notice me, please! That's all I hear! That's all that I hear! This is an outright yandere behavior, except they don't actually love you. I get that some fans have crossed the line multiple times, but we're not all like that. We hope for actual representation. The lack of self-awareness of this person is astonishing. You've insulted about 50% of your viewers. You're either lying or a bad writer. I doubt that. So the metric of a good show is having the main characters to be gay. Shut up. Quite the missed opportunity for representation in popular media. From one even more oppressed minority into another. Screw your representation. Why the hell would you joke so much and then stab people in the back? We're not blind. Don't do this to people. No, Mark, keep on doing it to these people. These are entitled babies who cannot handle the fact that fictional characters are straight. <sighs> I'm sorry, but pissing these people off is one way for them to learn how to grow the hell up. Jesus Christ, this kind of thing makes Pizza Gators sound less conspiratorial. As a middle-aged by women, this saddened me immensely. It was unkind to put it mildly. 
wow. Just, just wow. We are not some teenagers who just want to see two men fuck. We want representation. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You didn't help your argument by saying that you want representation. It makes you ten times more entitled. Making all those gay comments about Sherlock and John in his show, and then not making it true to looks a lot like queer baiting. And of course you're gonna talk about queer baiting. Ugh. Queer baiting. I heard that term queer baiting so much, I'm starting to get sick of it. So basically the idea of queer baiting is that you have a show representing characters with tension of homosexuality only to find out that the set tension is just characters being best buddies and the queers watching are getting disappointed. Haruhi and Renje turns out to be not lesbians, it would be awesome to see, but they are not. Nagisa and Rei are actually best buddies, which disappoints your nearby Fujoshi, but it would be nice to see them actually gay. Nico and Maki are constantly on edge to the point where they should just be a married couple at this point, but they're not really gay. Elsa and Anna are sisters, for God's sake, but that doesn't mean that an incest porn of them wouldn't be interesting. And of course, John and Sherlock banters to the point where they would feel like some sort of an old married couple or something, but they are not. They're just best buddies, brothers in arms, partners in crimes. And one of the scenes that highlight the fact that they're brothers is, in my honest opinion, one of the best scenes of the entire series, probably the entire Sherlock Holmes history. This is a private matter. John stays. This is family. That's why he stays. That was freaking amazing. When I see a little bit of a tension between two characters, I find it charming that some people actually interpret this as a ship. It's Fujoshi Logic 101. And I embrace that because it's really amusing and it opens up to some interesting porn possibilities. I don't embrace it in a serious fashion, of course. It's just people's fantasy and it's very amusing. It's fun. It's all fun. It's all just for fun and games. It's all just for my own personal amusements, people's own personal amusements. That's perfectly fine. However, there are some people who took this down into a personal level. Queer baiting on its entirety basically implies that queer people are getting into shows just to see their own sexuality being represented and not because whether or not the show is good or has great characters or good story. I don't believe that this is the case for queer people. I believe that queer people will watch the shows regardless of whether or not they're straight or gay. Because a show is not about that. Sherlock is not about that. Sherlock is about the detective works and investigation and deduction and observation. It's not about gay romance. You want to turn it into gay romance because you are also queer? You want your favorite character to be queer? This is literally nothing but demanding entertainment industry sent by to notice you. Why? Because you exist. I'm off to Wikipedia for this. I know it's Wikipedia, but come on. Wikipedia is a progressive site. They're not gonna lie about queer baiting, although I do find the three warnings on the top incredibly problematic. So here's them describing what queer baiting really is. Queer baiting is a term coined for a relatively recent sociocultural phenomenon that affects LGBT plus umbrella term queer fans of the media, particularly audiovisual media like television series and films, but also other media like books, podcasts, radio shows, etc. So there's Wikipedia describing it to you. Here's a brief excerpt from one of the sections called Representation. The media has very little queer representation outside of queer-specific shows such as The L Word or Queer as Folk. According to research compiled by the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, the 2012-2013 television season saw 4.4% of the series regulars as queer characters, a marked increase from the statistics from previous years, 2.9% 2 in 2011, 3.9% in 2010, 3% in 2008, and 1.1% in 2007. Gay characters not existing in fiction is defamation? What? The more and more I find about what queer baiting is, the more and more it pissed me off. It reeks of nothing but pure entitlement based on the fact that queer people exist. And that's it. Not including queer people is defamation now. Just... Wow. And here's my favorite segment on the Wikipedia article. Audience reactions and consequences. Oh, this is gonna be beautiful, isn't it? What kind of consequences that will happen when gay people don't exist in fiction? Is it murder or suicide or a closet homosexual reenacting Sandy Hook? What? 
Although the statistics show increasing representation, it can be interpreted as something negative. One of the most popular queer characters currently on television is Kurt Hummel on Fox's Glee, who undergoes a coming out storyline over the course of the show, and after revealing himself as gay, he truly begins to learn to love himself. The character has been criticized for perpetuating stereotypes and caricatured images of gay men, such as the way he dresses, certain mannerisms that can be called effeminate. That, that's just amazing. That, that's just amazing, Wikipedia. Statistics show increasing representation, but it can be interpreted as something negative. Shut up. Shut up. It can be interpreted as something negative? Well, that's entirely on you then. I don't interpret this as something negative. I think more and more LGBT people in fiction is something positive, at least according to your standard. You see everything as freaking negative these days. And then you showed an example from Glee. God, I don't remember Glee. It's like years ago. So this article is kind of outdated. And a character that perpetuates gay stereotype. So freaking what? How is this harmful? Some fans might also see that the characters are being added as plot devices rather than actual characters. For instance, Glee went on to introduce several more queer characters to the program, with the most queer series regulars have drawn criticism from presenting superficial stereotypes of queerness for dramatic effect. See? This is what happens when you whine. People adding gay characters for the sake of having gay characters and not for actually good writing. I I'm being a little conflicted here. Do you want gay representation? More gay representation or actual good writing? You want both and you didn't have both? Go back to fanfiction.net or make your own goddamn show. It's true that since LGBT plus are minorities, most of the viewers will not belong to these groups and not care or maybe even be uncomfortable with openly queer characters. Thus, through queer baiting, the creators can appeal to the queer market and avoid the backlash that comes with writing queer characters. In this way, they also avoid making any social progress. I really hate how they use the word backlash here because in this day and age, most straight people are okay with gay people on TV. They're not okay with poorly written gay people. Not because they're gay, but because they're poorly written. The backlash, as you shown here, Wikipedia, only comes from LGBT people in general. Uh, scratch that. Horribly entitled Tumblrites who happen to be a member of the LGBT, or claim to be fighting for the LGBT. Some queer fans might have said it as a way to throw us a bone where we normally wouldn't have anything to acknowledge that we're there in the audience when the powers that would be preferred to ignore us. However, some others are unsatisfied by the poor representation they're given. Fans demand more accountability from writers that get us wrong, or just don't give us enough. You are such a little brat, aren't you? Fans demand accountability from writers that get them wrong. What are you going to do about them? Harass them to the point where they quit Twitter? Or consider suicide? Seriously, your whining has gone way too far, to the point of bullying and intimidation. Freaking ships. Characters, ships, pairings, gays. It's all just for fun. And you, you made it really not fun. Just, this article just reeks of entitled millennial Tumblrite stench. And I'm really disgusted by it. It can even add up to the point where it hurts the queer audience. Queer baiting often plays potentially queer hints and references as mere jokes, but if the representation in question utilizes humor, are queer people in on a joke or are they the joke? That's just your personal interpretation, and your personal interpretation is not the fact, you monkey! It also portrays queer relationships as non-existent, only heterosexual, platonic relationships that were misunderstood. This dynamic is often set up in such a way that the characters and creators must constantly remind us that the queering of their relationship is a joke, or even a perversion of their relationship. Intentionally or not, this sends a message that a gay relationship is not only less interesting, but less deep, less valuable, and less pure. <sighs> Your opinion is garbage. Your interpretation of this entire thing is incredibly malicious. No wonder why you breed up incredibly paranoid, delusional, easily triggered snowflakes. You see everything as going against you. So, in conclusion, it's nothing. No real life consequences here other than feelings are hurt. I don't care. I really don't give a damn your feelings are hurt. These are the kinds of people who never felt that their feelings are hurt. Well. Here's to how hurt your feelings are, and here's an extra middle finger to be shoved right up your butthole. 
God, this topic is so infuriating. I, I really try not to take these people seriously and have a bit of laugh, but all of this is just so depressing. Look, fangirls, for Josie's off of the show, John Locke has never been a canon thing, ever. It's only inside your fictitious imagination, and it should be there. Or else, your demand that your fantasy is real will hurt real people. You're making shipping not fun. I love shipping characters. I love to talk about shipping characters. I even love to have my ships to go to battle. It's fine. Let's have fun. But for God's sake, you took this way too goddamn seriously. Stick to fan fictions, all right? Stick to fandom. Or hell, make your own Sherlock show. Sherlock Holmes is public domain. Make an anime Sherlock and have it compete with Yuri on Ice on Crunchyroll to appease your Tumblr fantasy or something. <sighs> Jesus. <sighs> Maintain calm. <sighs> Maintain calm. Is there something more infuriating than this? Make Hartswood's films, BBC, Gatiss, and Moffat answer for the queer baiting of Sherlock. A change.org petition. Perfect. This kind of coding is damaging to the LGBTQ community, both through to the destroying their self-esteem and damaging their image in the eyes of the heteronormative community. In addition to blatantly poor characterization, writing, and effects, it's confirmed that the rest of the show was in fact queer baiting its audience. Blatantly poor characterization, writing, and effects. That's your personal opinion. Damaging to the LGBTQ community both through destroying their self-esteem and damaging their image in the eyes of the heteronormative community. Ugh. To all the LGBTQ people out there, you deserve better than being represented by these entitled Tumblr rights. Okay? You deserve better than this. They're using you as a shield to make their own fantasy canon. That fact alone is even more damaging to the LGBT community. And they didn't realize that because they're only using you as a shield for their own personal benefit. This kind of thing makes you weak. It makes you look like babies that need to be pampered with. I don't believe that. I believe that you are better and these people are not you. The only thing that I can say to these people who keep on using women, minorities, and LGBT people as a shield for their own personal benefit. My brain rots. Put that in your blog. Or better still, stop inflicting your opinions on the world. Couldn't have said it better. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support me on Patreon. And thanks for watching.